Welcome back to the AT&T cybersecurity video series. My name is Shira Rubinov, and I'm here with Jason Inskip, director of the 5G Center of Excellence. Jason, welcome back again. Happy to have you here. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Certainly. So this segment will dive into the potential that 5G has to drive business outcomes, improve customer experience, increase efficiency, and will also cover both existing possibilities and use cases that are just on the horizon. So Jason, what is one of the coolest things you've seen in business do with 5G and something that is only possible with 5G? Oh man, <laughs> you're gonna, I first have to put my propeller geek hat on for just a second and say, it's probably not what everybody thinks is gonna be cool. The first thing that's actually cool is before 5G, I couldn't do everything like uh, virtualization, right? We didn't do that. Late LTE is when all that started. And you know, if you know, the, for me, and knowing the nuts and bolts of how things work and taking things apart, that was fascinating, right? Is how I could basically put pieces where I need them, right? And, and I think that's, you know, first time I started thinking about, wow, it can actually be user-defined, right? So that was the first kind of, you know, neat thing and really given me and the way I think is giving me the ability to not just think outside of the box, but rebuild it, right, in terms of what's best for the customer, now, from an application perspective, again, stay on the geek note here a minute, everything that starts to happen in terms of these, uh, you know, help me Obi-Wan Kenobi type hologram type scenarios, right? I mean, those things are, are just, just amazing how they can get done and, and to see them continue to mature in just the last couple of years, because it's not, and, and what's even more interesting going back to the prior point is you have to understand the holistic view. Right. You have a local side that's capturing the video. You have a back call that's taking it somewhere else. And not only do, do those applications have to work, but the network has to harmonize. Right. In terms of if I'm over a thousand miles away, it may not make a difference how good my application is because we can't beat the speed of light. Mm. Right. Not yet. Anyway. Not so yet. <laughs> not yet. Well, you know, uh, when we get some time travel, we may have it. But till then. But again, those kind of things, because it's not just the output, which is the hologram video, someone sitting in a room with you that's not there. But I start to, to the first point, peeling it back, like, wow, all this stuff has to work together. And I, with the NBA thing that we did recently with the hologram interview. Very cool. I, that was amazing. But when I stepped back and peeled it back, I was like, wow, we did this, right? That's really powerful message in terms of the complexity underneath. And, uh, and it's getting better every day, which is awesome. Amazing. So what is one way businesses are using 5G to provide better customer experience and streamline their operations as well? Yeah, there's there's a lot of, uh, you know, gift and the curse of, of an event like COVID, right? It, you know, in my head, yes. it's pushed uh, a couple of things. Like, you know, I was talking to someone probably about this time last year, right after my last flight, I think. And, you know, they had said they went from 80% in the office to 80% on their VPN head ends, right? So they had to make a massive shift in terms of how they were, uh, you know, using connectivity. And then you take this home experience and, you know, I, I've figured out a little bit better how to do home things like we're doing here. But I mean, it was challenging for a bit. You know, the kids are home, you've got everybody streaming. So from a networking perspective, we had to adjust, right? To, to fit that. And we, there's still things that need to adjust. But that's also playing into the learnings elsewhere. Take the biggest solution I'm seeing right now that's portable and intriguing is video, right? Video as a sensor for everything, right? From COVID to COVID entry for temperature to technology to heat sensors instead of multiple heat sensors, PPE, protective equipment. Sure. It just has so much portability and it fits the narrative of the things that cellular does, which is make things very stable from a connectivity perspective. And as you see those two begin to harmonize, you're seeing that begin to scale in different ways to other business lines. And that's also helping drive, to me, the first, I don't want to say the first, but one of the use cases that has enough portability to help develop the, 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 the network edge, right? To develop the things that a smart city would use, a, a big, large geographic area. So that's one. And then again, secondly, is... When I talk about edge, it's how do you use the edge more effectively in your geo zones as it scales? So, so those are, you know, high level, just some ways the network has shifted, but uh, very valuable to our customers as they're thinking about going forward. 
No, I couldn't agree more. And I really like the fact that you brought up that real use case. Certainly talking about COVID, that's something personal for everybody, not just businesses. Certainly the business perspective where they can actually help people and the people could wrap their heads around it and it becomes something personal. So it's more of something that we could all embrace and not just think about it theoretically. So thank you for that. So what possibilities are just on the horizon for 5G and what will we be using it for in a few years besides what we've discussed? Wow, George Jetson will be here soon, right? Yeah. That's kind of the way you think about it. Um, George Jetson, oh, we've already passed Marty McFly, so throw in as many uh, <laughs> pop culture jokes as I can, right? There you go. But when you, when you start to think about things that are on the horizon, um, what was exciting to me is the way the ecosystem is kind of really starting to develop, right? And the possibilities there, and you know, we, we joke sometimes, is uh, you know, I can do anything I want with, with software, just give me the time and money. And that's really what it's become right, is how, how, what can we do? And it's important, though, I, I think there's all kinds of technologies I can talk about for days, but it's important that we're doing it foundationally from a building block perspective, yes. right? The connectivity, it's like air and water. You got to have it, right? There, there's no way you're going to get around it. So we've got to build it right in a way that gives uh, predictability for the other layers, right? And you still think about it from a Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the air and water is at the bottom. If you don't have that, you can't do anything else. And you're in technology. Next one is security. And right? I've got to have the framework exactly. for security. And then the self-actualization is all these technologies, right? If I can't do the lower two, the hard ones, I'm never going to get to or be struggle to get to, right? So when I think about just on the horizon, I think hologram and that continuing to scale, right? AR basically built in in multiple ways will be here sooner than you need because you don't have to have a lot of content for it, right? So I don't need as much edge. So those things are going to come. I think the enablers are going to come right behind it and, and, or I shouldn't say behind it are going to come as part of that. So that whether it's um, uh, AR experience, whether it's manufacturing, there's going to be portability. I think to me, that's one of the most exciting things is the ability to make these things portable. We talked about video, right? It's the same platform. If I'm in a factory or I'm doing a COVID test, same thing, right? right? It's just, if you do it, if we can do it that fundamentally, it gives us a lot more scale in terms of going after uh, horizon side uh, technologies. I, 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 st I stutter on use cases because <laughs> use cases aren't technology, right? So it's kind of, we can do anything we want. It's how do we want to do it? I think it's important you brought up the ground up builds. We certainly talk about that in security all the time, build it right from the ground up, have the fundamentals in place in order to level and layer on what you need and not go back to try to bandaid it up because There'll be too many holes. It won't work well. And could you stress to our audience a little bit more about that piece? I think that's really important for them to understand on how that actually segues into the security space as well. That would be interesting. Yeah. The Again, I think traditionally, you know, first and foremost, when we've looked at security on cellular, we've really looked at it from where it ends, where the, where the cellular network ends. Not that that's right or wrong. It's just because the cellular network has been built pretty strong, right, in terms of the inherent things that are in there, both from a closed network perspective, which closed is good and bad, right? In this case, for security, it's pretty good, right? Yeah. But now with this, the new concept, virtualization, edge networking, meeting edge computing, it, it's very important that the security person is not only part of the discussion during the strategy, but during the education, of course. right? Just to understand the difference between where they have lived and breathed before versus what's changed now. And if you do that right, that you got me on the task, right? So one of the things we talk about is, um, and as we talk to new partners or, or new leveraging relationships, we'll say, we take care of layer one to three and a half, you take care of layer three and a half to seven, and we split the difference on privacy and security. That's mm -hmm. the convergence, right? If we don't have those things up front, I'm gonna have a hard time, you know, handing the packet off and vice versa. So we, we really try to stress that and bring that in, even if it's just for education, right? Just so everybody's aware. And, and then obviously, if you're aware, you can get to what meets policy and mitigates risk. Exactly. My, my two cents for what it's worth, right? Definitely worth. <laughs> well, thank you, Jason, for your very important information, Chair. And I look forward to talking to you again real soon. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.